Hey, it's Clayton, AKA Cell Dweller. And today I wanna to walk you through the first instrument that I created from my brand new company, Refractor Audio, and it's called Transport. Let's take an in-depth look. Transport was built in the native instrument's contact environment. So if you want to use the instrument itself, you can either have the fully paid version of contact or the free version of contact. And as a producer, I also know that not everybody produces using instruments, etc. Some people are sample based. So I thought it'd be cool as if you just go to refractoraudio.com and register. I'm giving you all 2000 plus samples as waves that you can use however you want. So I've spent a few years making all of these samples on most of the gear you see in this room. A lot of analog and modular synthesizers, a lot of analog outboard gear, um, running through my beautiful SSL console here, um, plus a lot of other tricks in the box. So these are generally highly processed and sculpted, uh, a lot of melodic content, a lot of rhythmic content, bunch of one shots. So to take 2000 plus samples and put them into different patches that we can use within this instrument, we basically split about 24 samples per NKI. And an NKI is just the protocol that Contact uses to load a patch. So there's over 100 patches in Transport alone, each one loading discreetly different sounds. And we tried to keep them also grouped together by tempo and key. Let me open up one of the patches from Transport. This is from the Drum Loops collection, and this is just the first window of the GUI, as you can see. And in the title, you can see that uh, we include BPM, but if this were synth sound or a bass sound or something tonal, it will also include key information as well. One thing you'll want to do, you don't have to, but it'll be really helpful, is you hit this little keyboard icon at the top of the contact window and it will show you this keyboard down here. And what we've done is color code the keys to help you more quickly identify what the different sections are. This isn't an instrument that you just load up and play across 88 keys and, and go. It's set up as a more performance based thing um, with different sections that do different things. So starting with this green section down here, those that's your preset section. So there's 10 presets and by hitting those keys, whether you're doing it live or recording MIDI into your DAW, you can change presets that you can load. There, there are 10 that we've already loaded in for you to get you going, but you can load in any that you want. Next up you've got two purple keys. One is a slice repeater and I'll explain that a little later. And the key to the left of it, which is the B flat, is the slice repeat stepper, which will actually advance you to the next slice. And it'll make more sense when I show you how that works. Then our blue chunk of keys is your sample content. So those are all generally loops. There are a bunch of one shots as well, but a lot of this content is loop based. And you'll find score percussion loops, synth based loops, synth loops, and lots of other stuff in here that will all combine together to to give you even more content than I'm giving you. Above that in the red section, you've got your transposition range. So if you have something tonal, you'll be able to play those keys and it will pitch shift the tonal information based on the keys that you're using there. So the instrument by itself has five step sequencers built in, each correlating to one of these planets at the top of the GUI. And when you click on each one of them, which is volume, delay send, cutoff, pitch, and hold, your step sequencer controls that parameter, and each step sequencer is independent of the others. These step sequencers can run in order, sequentially, from 1 through 16 steps, or you can put them in random mode, and they will randomly jump around between steps. So as a quick start, you could just hit any of these blue keys notated here on your keyboard or in your DAW as MIDI. They'll just play back loops. Now normally you would think in an instrument, when you press more than one key at a time, you're going to be playing them both at the same time. That's where transport is different. The probability engine that's built into transport allows you to play more than one key and what it will do is jump between different slices of all of the loops you hold down. If you want to hold down all 24 at once, you're going to get a random playback of different slices of all 24 of those loops, or as many as you'd like, set at a rate that you determine. In the probability engine section here, you've got a rate knob which is set at 1 16th. So if I hold down more than one note at once, I'm going to get a different slice from each loop that I'm holding down. 
And so that sounds a little messy, um, but you can obviously dial this in in a lot of different ways. So in the green section of the keys here, we've already included presets that will allow you to step through the different rates of your probability engine, ready to go. First six or eight presets, but you can load in any that you want. As I hit the keys here, you'll see the rate change here. That means that you can change the division or the timing of how often your notes are swapping between themselves randomly using the probability engine. These things can be changed while you're playing in real time. You can record them. You don't have to stop your transport and play them. This is all playable in real time across the entire instrument. The other really cool thing is I could play a single sample back the way it was created. But if that's too boring for me, in the probability engine area, you can change the steps from in order to random and now every note depending on this setting here your rate setting is going to be randomized just with one loop let me shift that back to in order that's just with one sample you can again do that with a number of samples that are randomizing amongst themselves and randomizing in the order they're playing back so there are fair amount of options here that will allow you to get content that will be unique to you. In the probability engine area, if I leave these sample slices in order, that means they're just playing back the way that I originally created them. And in the case where I have two different drum loops that have a predictable kick and snare pattern, the snare is pretty much always landing in the same spot. And now if I were to randomize them, you'll always hear your snare, but it might be from one loop or another one because they're playing in order. So now you've got a beat that will play, but will be much more interesting than just one set of sounds creating that beat. Let's peek under the hood for a second so I can show you what the probability engine is actually doing. So when I hold down one sample, you can see notated by the yellow stripe and the red velocity value in this window, you'll see what it's doing. It's just playing one sample. So as I hold more than one note down at a time, you will see the yellow stripe dancing around based on where the probability engine is telling transport to select the next slice from. Plus you'll see the waveform changing based on which slice is being used. The beautiful thing is that all this magic happens under the hood and you never actually have to see that happen. You just get to look out the window of this wonderful transport ship. So instead of me explaining all the different features in the sequencer section, why don't I just use some examples and show them to you. I think it'll make a lot more sense. So I've got a drum loops patch loaded up. And why don't we look at the volume tab, which is this first one here, and look at the step sequencer and kind of some of the features there. So in and of itself, you just have some standard playback if you, hit, if you hit keys. And you'll see the step sequencer moving in time because this rate here is set at 16th notes. Now, it's important to note that this rate and the probability engine rate can be independent of each other. They do not need to be the same. And you get really interesting results when they aren't. So these white bars in the step sequencer represent your max volume and your minimum volume. So all the way up and solid white is max volume and as you pull them down each step when you're down here it's at minimum volume these dials over to the right can actually set your ceiling and your floor so if I took my ceiling which is at max and pull it down now everything drops and if I pull my floor level up I push everything back up There's some cool tricks I'll show you that you can incorporate that functionality in in a little bit so I've got a loop here that I'm gonna play and we've got some quick presets up here which have some shapes for the step sequencer and if you were to quickly click them they will give you some preset shapes like ramp up, ramp down, sine wave, random which is my favorite because every time you hit it you get a random value um, and if you want to reset these you can go through and draw them if you want you can just click and drag and you'll be able to draw within the sequencer or you can take your floor setting over here your dial and just crank it up to max and now you're back at full volume 
So I'm going to create a random pattern, and you'll see how this sounds when now I play back that same loop. That was random and probably not very useful for what I need it for. So what I'm going to do is show you why I would use the floor setting over here. And I'll bring the level up so that the minimum volume is at about 50%. Then when I randomize, the randomization will pay attention to the fact that that setting is there and it will never randomize anything under 50%. And this will apply later to pitch and other settings as well. Let's show another example. I can use the first preset here, which is basically an on-off every other step. Max volume, min volume. When I hit that, there's my loop. Ramp up. So there's another case where I'd be like, okay, that's cool, but I can't hear the beginning of that loop. So let me pull the minimum values up. And now, You can hear the first few slices there, but they're a lot lower, and then the thing will ramp in volume. And the same holds true for the ramp down. Another cool thing about the volume tab here is that you have a velocity on and off. So right now, by default, it's off. So no matter how hard or soft you hit the keys if you're using a keyboard controller, or even drawing in the MIDI notes, it doesn't pay attention to velocity. It's always at one volume. But I like the ability to control volume via velocity. So if I click that little switch there, now the volume of my sample is related directly to the velocity. The harder I hit it, the louder it is. The softer I hit it, the quieter it is. So there's a live drum section too with a bunch of live drums I've recorded over many years. Chopped them up, edited. Some of them I've really tweaked to make them sound a little more synthetic, but you can still tell it's a live drummer. Another one sounds straight up live. There's drum fills, there's a little bit of everything. But when you use the probability engine to mash up these live performances, you end up with something that sounds kind of live, but definitely sounds manipulated. So I had a bunch of fun creating things that I would use in scores, movie scores, and those are in the score percussion section. And again, you have a bunch of single loops. And nothing is being manipulated by transport right now. Those are just the straight playback. This is a good spot to show you a few different features of transport's functionality all in one instrument. And let's start by using this hold feature. So what is the hold feature? Well, the hold feature out of all five of these step sequencers is the only one that actually runs at the rate of the probability engine, not at the rate of the sequencer engine here. And that's because you can get into some weird things. If you set rates in different spots, it won't play back as expected. So this made the most sense. So just remember, hold rate directly correlates to the rate of your probability engine. So you can see the rate moving along under the step sequencer here as I at eighth notes and what I want to do is show you what the hold function does so what it does is it basically is the duration of each slice so how long is each slice holding so here's a sound that has 16th note pulses to it but they're kind of tied together there's sound that kind of ties the whole thing together so let's listen to some loops that I'm doing at a 16th note probability engine rate here's one that has a 16th note pulse to it but the sound is kind of tied across the entire loop so you're hearing sound constantly it's not very tight I can use the hold tab to affect the length of each slice so right now I'm using 16th notes it will basically change the length or the the hold time of each slice of that 16th note I'm gonna use this dial over here to basically bring the ceiling down so you can start to hear how it's affecting the length of each of your notes You went from something that was tied together and kind of had a rhythm to it, but basically was a lot more noisy, to something that becomes very tight and rhythmic. And you can use your floor setting here to dial that back up if you'd like. And of course, there's this link button that will actually link the two together, which basically floor and ceiling dials globally act as one across all of the steps in the sequencer. 
And so let's say I want to tighten that loop up, but it's still too choppy for me. I want to feel a little bit of decay off the end of each one of those slices. You can do that right down here with this decay knob. And as I increase this, you'll hear the sound of each slice decaying a little bit as opposed to just getting a hard cut off to it. All the way down, hard slice, and then the more you bring the decay up, the more you'll kind of fill in those gaps in between your slices. Okay, so I've got now just one loop, but what if I wanted to play a bunch of different loops? and create this constantly varying rhythm. But that's not enough for me. I need a little more excitement in this thing. That's why we have this delay send sequencer. And this step sequencer does run at this sequencer right here, which is at 16th notes. So moving this slider changes how much signal is being sent to the delay. So right now this is only the first slice that's being sent to the delay by that amount. This being 100%, that being 0%. So we're at about 75% roughly. On the first step out of this 16 note sequencer, that slice is being sent to the delay. So let me just dial in a few more here. In fact, I'll go random. And now let's see what we got. Now let's say I quickly want to hear what this sounds like with the delay on or off. That's why we added these little orbiting moons around each of these planets which act as bypass tabs. So you just click that button and now I've bypassed the delay completely. No more delay. And just to clarify, this is a delay send amount. So you, this does not actually control how much delay is playing back that you're hearing. It's how much signal is being sent to the delay. And now that I have the delay dialed in, let's kind of Bring, let's mess around a little bit with the hold of the notes. In fact, I'm going to randomize the hold of these notes and let's see what we get. You can mash them up, add effects, tweak various settings and create things that become uniquely yours. Let's show you a synth bass loops patch and the filter cutoff tab. So this sequence will run at the rate that you designate here to the left of it. Those are all just single patches and obviously we can mash them up uh, using the probability engine like we could any other sample. Here I want to show you filter cutoff. So again, let's just pick a ramp and at the basis level, selecting a ramp and playing back one single sample sounds like this. So that will ramp up. A quick way to randomize this would be to click the random button here on the sequencer. So the low notes that are getting cut off are so low that I can't really totally hear the bass. So I'm going to raise my floor a little bit so that the minimum value is still at a level that I can hear and that I like. Now another thing you can do is crank the resonance. And I wouldn't suggest cranking it unless you want to scare the crap out of your cat. Because this thing will scream at you. So be careful when you crank this resonance, but there isn't a resonance setting that will certainly affect your sound. So this randomizes the little resonance, and let's actually go to the whole tab and make this a little more interesting. How about a little delay? So another thing you can do with the filter cutoff is use this handy little link button over here by the min max values and that will link your minimum maximum which is your ceiling 
and your floor. And that way, when you move one, it moves the other and basically acts as a cutoff across the entire patch. Why don't I load up a patch from the synth loops, show you a little bit about the pitch manipulation in transport. There are a couple of things you can do to manipulate the pitch. If you want to use the sequencer section, you can go to the pitch sequencer tab, which is here. Here's a pattern I created that is only one note, so there are no deviations to the notes itself. Now, as you can imagine, the step sequencer runs at this rate to the left of it, and each of these steps can be changed to create different notes. So even if I were to create a ramp, a ramp down, and it's locked to chromatic right now. So those steps are snapping chromatically, and the same would apply for any of the quick patterns. So let's say I want something in minor. randomize that and you can also go in and draw any step you'd like here and you'll notice as you're drawing they're going to snap per step to the scale that you select beneath the step sequencer so there's a second way you can manipulate pitch in transport and it's this red section of keys here where the step sequencer pitch tab will actually transpose upwards the Pitch keys will allow you to transpose up or down based around your original root note. As you can see here, the key of this patch is in G, and that's notated by this blue key in the red section showing you that the default pitch of this set of instruments was at G. If I hit the G key up here in this red range, it does nothing because it's already defaulted to G, but listen what happens when I start playing notes while I'm holding down this one note. So you can change pitch values in real time or by recording MIDI and tweaking it in your DAW, however you'd like to do that. Now not every loop that I created for transport was just one single note. I created patterns because some people like to just drop in pre-made patterns that already have melodic content, but you could also use your pitch sequencer if you'd like to change certain notes on a particular step and basically change the melodic content to however you'd like it to be. Here's a quick way you can combine both pitch manipulation tools in transport at once. Go to your pitch sequencer tab and pick the first quick pattern here, which is basically every other step, max, min. Therefore, you've got now a bouncing octave. Your pattern is bouncing an octave on every step. And then you can transpose in real time using the keyboard range down here simultaneously. So Transport has over 650 one-shots. Those are drums, modular hits, and all kinds of like modular cool little sounds that I couldn't categorize anywhere else. And because these are not loops, the GUI is a little bit different on the front here. And mainly, instead of having a sequencer section, you just have one big bar that controls that particular parameter. So let's say I just want to globally change the cutoff amount of this kick. I just grab that single slider, and it basically acts as a cutoff. There's no step sequencers in the one-shots, but there are lots of one-shots, and you're going to have a lot of fun with them. So let's talk about presets for a minute, and they work a little differently in Transport. There are two types. There are key switch presets, and then there are factory and user presets. And they're different, but they're the same, and I'll show you how that is. So this green area are your key switch presets. So you've got 10 presets down in this green area, and if you were, let's say, to overwrite one of them and open up another instance of Transport, that new instance of transport will also have that newly overwritten preset you just created. So those are global across any instance of transport. If you want to load or save the entire state of a particular 
instance of transport. You've dialed in your filter cutoff and your hold time and your delay send and you love what you have. You can go over to the factory section here and save your preset by hitting the save button. And it will default to an area on your computer. You can name it, hit save, and now let's say you want to recall that. You would hit the load button and it should default to the same directory you just saved to and you can double click that and it will load your great transport patch that you just created. We've also included a bunch of factory presets. You can double click and it will load up into the GUI here. So factory and user presets are stored locally on your machine whereas key switch presets are readily available as soon as you open any instance of transport. They're also very easy to switch on the fly so you may want to create your own key switch presets. So you can load a factory or a user preset up if you'd like and to save it into a key switch spot it's very easy. You can hit this store button and either select a destination from this drop down menu or you can hit a key in the key switch area and now that's designated to that key on any instance of transport and you can play it on the fly instantly. So I hope you've gotten a better glimpse of how you can create something really cool with this instrument. So head over to refractoraudio.com and register your copy of transport to get access to all the raw WAV files from transport. I'd love to say that I want to see how you transport your future productions to the next level, but that would be super cheesy. So head over to the Refractor Audio Facebook page, like it, and upload your audio and video so I can check out what you're doing. So until then, this is Clayton, aka Celldweller, signing off.